Okay. So back in uh, January this past year, 2020, me and some friends took a little hike uh, in the Big Cypress National Preserve. Um, the preserve is down in South Florida. It's the beginning of the, uh, the Florida National Scenic Trail. And the Florida Trail, for those of you who have not uh, learned that already from attending some of these other presentations we've given, is a, uh, it's a footpath that runs from the bottom of uh, Florida, from South Florida all the way up north through the Panhandle going west all the way to Pensacola. It's, it's about 1100 mile trail. Um, and it begins down in the Big Cypress National Preserve. The Big Cypress National Preserve um, was started um, in 1974, it was established by Congress. And uh, the story of how that began was um, back in the late 60s, they were planning to build a huge airport out in the Big Cypress National Preserve, which is just next to the Everglades National Park. The Everglades National Park already existed at that time, but it was just outside the boundaries of the park. They wanted to build this huge jet port that would serve both Miami and Fort Myers, if you can believe that. So it was this big uh, grandiose plan, but the environmentalists and others who wanted to preserve the Everglades felt it would be an ecological disaster to put a big jet port there. And um, so they uh, protested and um, lobbied to get that whole area preserved and uh, for, for sure not to allow that jet port to come in. Um, and so as they were trying to um, conserve that area and save it just to be a wildlife area, um, part of the constituency was Native Americans who lived in the area and traditional residents of the area um, who liked to Either they had a hunt camp there, a fish camp. They, um, some had little houses back there. So there were these people who really resided in the glades there and had done so for generations. And so if we created a national park there, um, typically people are displaced from national parks. So it's a little flexible, but it, it's a little more strict to have a national park there. And so there really wasn't any way at the current, at that time to accommodate the needs of the residents as well as the need to preserve the environment. And so they came up with this concept of a national preserve, which allows the ecosystem to be preserved while the traditional activities of the residents like hunting and um, other commercial recreation activities to continue. So they have, you know, they still have you know, the ability to have like um, airboat rides through there and that sort of thing. So that area was all set aside as a preserve and this was the nation's first national preserve and the whole concept of preserve started with this big Cypress National Preserve. It's a huge area, 729,000 acres. It's larger than the state of Rhode Island and it's basically a uh, a swamp ecosystem, freshwater swamp ecosystem. Uh, it's also the largest contiguous habitat for panthers in Florida. Over a million people visit a year. And uh, <clears throat> recently, the folks that like to get back in there and, and hunt and fish, they, they have sort of developed a style of transportation, which is off-road vehicles versus, you know, canoes and, <laughs> and, and hiking. Um, and so they're pretty into their ORVs, their off-road vehicles, <clears throat> to be able to get back into these areas where they can hunt and fish. And many um, of our trail maintainers use those vehicles as well. Um, so there's a, a purpose to it, but um, they're looking to expand the number of trails back in there. Um, and there's currently a lawsuit going on to allow them to do that. And it, apparently there's now, um, uh, you know, a proposal, several proposals for expanding those trails. And so this trail that I'm showing you today might be moved, but uh, it'll still be a good hike through the National Preserve there. 
Uh, the National Park Service uh, announces their significant statements on their website. And um, this is part of their reason for being. Um, the preserve protects the Big Cypress watershed, which is an area critical to the survival of the greater Everglades ecosystem. That, uh, <clears throat> that water is a slow moving sheet of water that feeds the, the Everglades from the north and it comes through Big Cypress. So it's, it's really critical that the entire system is preserved. Um, uh, it's the largest door cypress forest in North America. You'll see pictures of those door cypress. They're so pretty and so beautiful. And it's also <clears throat> one of the largest old growth South Florida slash pine forests. So we'll show you pictures of hiking through that. Um, and it's a habitat for many threatened and endangered plant and animal species, including Florida panther, the red cockaded woodpecker and the ghost orchid. Um, <clears throat> and it also contains evidence of approximately uh, 15,000 years of human use and, and sustains resources that continue to hold importance to traditionally associated cultures, including Miccosukee and Seminole peoples. Where is it? So if you see the map in this uh, slide, <clears throat> where that little starburst is, that's roughly where the Big Cypress National Preserve is. It's uh, between uh, Miami, Fort Lauderdale on the east and Fort Myers on the west. And it's between <clears throat> Tamiami Trail on the south and I-75 on the north. Here's another little picture of it. So you're, the trail, starts about here and goes up in through here. So we'll be starting on Tamiami Trail at the Ranger Station called the Oasis Visitor Center and then traveling through the swamp and then up to I-75. So here's another little map of our trail. <clears throat> uh, this is the route we took, and these are our two nights that we spent out uh, in, in the Everglades or in the, in the Big Cypress Swamp. Uh, one was at the Pine Island Camp and one was at the Oak Hill Camp. It was about 10 or 11 miles the first two days and then about an eight mile trip on the last day. Here we are at the uh, Southern Terminus, which is the beginning of the Florida Trail and a uh, nice little plaque there to tell you where you are. Uh, right around the, uh, the Ranger Station, there are a lot of uh, our friendly Florida gators and uh, <clears throat> they're in that uh, canal along Tamiami Trail. There's quite a few very large ones. And so I must say when I was planning this trip, my greatest fear was um, being out there in a trail and having to walk with gators. I, I was spent a lot of time in South Florida, so I'm fairly comfortable with alligators, but uh, I don't necessarily walk through the water where the alligators are. And I kind of was a little afraid of going with a bunch of snakes in the water and uh, being on small little islands along the swamp where we had to camp, where anything else that wanted to be on dry land would want to be also. But I've got to say, um, all my fears were dispelled. It was the, not infested with gators and snakes at all. Uh, we saw, I think, one rattlesnake, which isn't unusual to be hiking along the Florida Trail, and uh, no gators, <laughs> except at the beginning and the end. So while we were walking through the swamp, I didn't see any. Not to say they're not there, but uh, it was uh, a whole different experience than what I was fearing. So it's the, uh, the swamp is typically, uh, this walk is typically very wet. Um, most, of the, most of the hike is through water uh, up to your ankles or beyond. Um, but this year was a very dry year. And again, it get, does vary mu very much year to year. Um, and uh, it's pretty typical of Florida hiking is your water can be you know, 
very prevalent some years and other years, you have a nice dry hike. So first seven to 10 miles on this year were very dry. As a matter of fact, we got so dry, we got, de we got dehydrated, a lot of us. It's very hot. Um, here's another picture from the first day. And this is a good shot of the, uh, <clears throat> the limestone bedrock along this trail. Um, in all of Florida, its bedrock is, is this you know, ancient limestone, which uh, was produced by millions of years of the peninsula being covered with water. And uh, these are basically the calcified remains of the uh, uh, inhabitants of that water. And that forms limestone. Limestone is a very soluble, soft rock. Um, and so um, water eats through it pretty easily. So you'll see, you can see a little bit here how it's been eaten away by the water. But really, all a lot of these spaces between this rock are holes that have been dissolved by water and are called solution holes. Here's a close up if you could see how that looks. And why this is a challenge for hiking is as you get further along, <clears throat> the, this uh, surface is covered with water and you enter the swamp. And so you never really know when you're stepping, if you're gonna be stepping on solid ground or you're gonna, your foot's gonna go in one of these holes. So that makes it a challenge. It makes it a very slow, careful, painstaking process. So we got through the first day, pretty much dry footed, came to our Pine Island camp, very pretty little campsite there, beautiful sunset. Day two, we started out dry again, walking through this uh, beautiful sawgrass environment, um, dotted with these little dwarf cypress trees that are so pretty um, and then through pine as well. Here's a great shot of these dwarf cypress and the sawgrass. It's just such a beautiful, expansive prairie, a wet prairie just extending as far as your eye can see. And some of the areas where the cypress grows deeper, like, sorry, grows taller and, <clears throat> and more congested forms what they call a cypress dome. And so you can see there's this dome shape with the taller trees in the middle and the shorter trees out towards the end. And in cypress domes, they're the wettest part of the prairie. So that's why the cypress trees grow there because they like the wetness. So if we'd been willing to venture off the trail and do a little bushwhacking and when we got so thirsty on that, those first 10 miles, we could go into the middle of this cypress dome and you're always gonna find water. So on that day, the last three miles um, began to get swampy, get very wet. Actually, it was more muddy than wet. So this mud just sucks your feet down into it. It's, it's so, so much effort to keep, keep picking your feet up out of this mud and moving to the next step. And then you're always looking <clears throat> out for these solution holes that you, where you can, your, your foot will sink even deeper into the mud. And some of the water came up to the shin deep at that point. Here you can see on the right-hand side, a little bit more of the swampy area <clears throat> where it's more wat watery. And then we came to our campsite for that night, which is a very small little island in the middle of this swamp. And uh, luckily we, 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 there were seven of us. So <laughs> luckily we had, we were able to find a spot and set up our camp, our tents, and there were two others because this is the beginning of through hiking seasons. There were two others also out in this small little island sharing the tent space, but it all worked out. Day three, we went into the deepest part of the swamp. <clears throat> this area, you're no matter even on dry years, you're always going to be walking through water. So we had eight miles to the end, and it was pretty much all like this. We're basically up to the knees or thighs or shins and keep walking through this swamp. But it was just beautiful as an experience like I've never had. So walking through the water. 
And at some point, we just followed these orange blazes, which are the signs for the path of the Florida Trail. And, you know, so you're in the middle of water. So there's really not a trail per se. Uh, you could see where the trail really is, where most people have walked. And actually, that got harder to walk in because it got so muddy. Uh, and so we began to move off the trail and keep following the, the orange blazes, but sort of blaze our own trail through the sawgrass. And it was actually a little easier to walk through it because there wasn't so much mud sucking on your feet. And uh, <clears throat> so you can see here that there's a lot of pretty bromeliads. They're, uh, they're air plants. And uh, so you find those in this area because the muddy soil it doesn't have, you know, a lot of uh, <clears throat> CO2 in it. It's anaerobic. And so there's nothing for it to, to grow on. So it goes through the air. And then we beautiful thistle flowers. There's a lot of beautiful wildflowers through there. And then finally, we made it to the end. And uh, at the end in the parking lot by I-75, there are a bunch of what we call trail angels waiting for us because this is the beginning of hiking season when we took this hike. And they had fresh fruit. I mean, those orange slices they served me were the best piece of orange I've ever had in my life. So that was pretty much the end of our hike. And it was a really welcome sight to see those trail angels. So we completed the hike. and I think we all turned to each other and said, that was an amazing journey, but I'm never gonna do it again. <laughs> There's a lot of people who love this hike and I like that I've done it, but I, I would say it's probably the hardest hike I've ever taken in my life. I've hiked about 650 miles of the Florida Trail, go th through the AT, through most of Georgia and North Carolina. Uh, I've hiked the White Mountains, but this was a very tough hike. So. Um, you know, if you ever try to hike it, be prepared for it. Um, maybe you're from South Florida, maybe you're a little more used to walking through swamps, you're used to the heat and humidity. But yeah, I would just uh, definitely prep for this hike um, and uh, be in good shape because uh, it's a, it takes a lot out of you and it also is much slower than you'd hike on dry land. Okay, so that's my presentation tonight.